that. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring up your next uh, speaker. Uh, he's going to talk about uh, Bitcoin. Is it freedom or is it control? And please give a big, warm, adopting Bitcoin welcome to Paolo Ardonio. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So today we are talking about freedom or control. I uh, think is uh, terms that are uh, overly used, uh, used everywhere, like it's extremely obvious for someone that is in the Bitcoin space to talk about these two terms. Uh, today I want to do a deep dive though in what they mean, why they are important, why we are at crossroads of, um, for humanity, for freedom. So first of all, I wanted to start with something that could seem um, at the beginning a little bit controversial. So embrace chaos for financial freedom. Chaos has, uh, in certain ways, I think also for political reasons, has been using, used uh, with a negative connotation. So maybe media, maybe politicians always are afraid of the word chaos because it means that is something that you cannot control. And so, you know, there is the joker here in, 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 on the back of me, and um, I want also to explain why the joker is there, right? So again, could be seen as controversial. So um, first of all, let's go back to chaos. So chaos is a term that uh, when I was preparing the presentation, I thought more about it, right? And the, how many of you guys are familiar with the Lauren's concept of the butterfly effect. All right, so the butterfly effect means or tells that, you know, if a butterfly was flapping its wings somewhere else in the world, a tornado, you know, maybe after weeks, after minutes, after weeks, after a year could happen. So is the process of, um, you know, um, uh, disturbing even with the smallest events, you know, non-linear ecosystems. And so the, um, the way I like to think about chaos, imagine how, you know, the, um, the small Torgot's bird can move its wings, can flap its wings and create a tornado in the global financial system. So that's the image that I want to give you today for El Salvador. Torgots is the uh, symbol of the country. And so if we think about it, if, think, if we think about how even the smallest of the countries, the smallest of the communities, we are here, there is Bitcoin Beach, and really everything started from people, right? So from the small f uh, peer in, the, in a, in a global environment, this can have massive effects on huge systems. And that's the, the, really the message that I want to give you today, how every one of us can be, you know, a small Torgos, a small butterfly, and how El Salvador is actually representing all of us in potentially creating this global chaos in the financial system. And... Um, why the joker? Because you know, I like one of the joker messages was, it's, all, it's not all about money, it's about sending a message. So this has multiple meanings, right? It's not all about the money, means that not everything is pure, is, is money, right? Is, money is communication, right? So it's about sending a message. So when we think about Bitcoin, when we think about financial systems, we always think about, okay, this is money, how I can, I will use it to buy products, I will use it to transact. But the, the same, the, the transaction, uh, the, the action of transacting is communicating. So it's not all about the money, it's about the sending a message, it's about considering money, not just money, but also communication, messages, but also is the fact that uh, we shouldn't, us as Bitcoiners, the people that try to change things, you know, 
we are not doing it for the money, right? Is, is, I think is a better way. You remember the meme, I'm in for the tech, talking about Bitcoin. Here we can say, I think this is a better message, right? So it's not all about making money. It's about sending a message that is a powerful message to the establishment in the financial world. And we are the crossroads. So the crossroad is... Um, it's just a decision that we have to make, personally, as, uh, as humanity, as communities, right? So between personally and humanity, there, is, there are multiple steps. So there is personally, there's uh, you know, family, friends, town, community, country, and then globally. And so um, we, have to, we have to make these decisions, right, at the crossroads. So we are standing there, no one can take, make these decisions for us, right? So it's, it's all about your community. It's about sharing these decisions and taking um, an informed decision where we think humanity should go. It's, again, it's our choice. It's about the, this choice that we are making in these years, in, this, um, in these years, is, is something that will characterize humanity for the future. Because... Technology is, uh, is moving fast, um, AI is moving fast, communications, social media, everything is moving fast. So if we are not faster than the curve, the, spe the, the, the speed of um, improvement of technology and the growth of technology, then we could be in a situation where even if we wanted to take a decision, it will be meaningless because technology and the people that understand technology can take the decision before everyone else. And so they can influence, a few people can influence humanity for the foreseeable future. So we want to explain, we want to educate people on the fact that everyone should be part of this decision, should not be something that others decide for us. So the... Um, Technology is power, liberation on enslavement, right? So what I think I like about technology, I'm a technologist, I'm, build, I'm a developer since 30 years, so I'm always focus my life in building stuff. The thing is that when you build things, whatever they are, they can be used for good and bad purposes. So technology is always neutral. It uh, doesn't, that, you know, doesn't determine its usage. It's just a passive thing. Is Humans, people, decide how to use technology. And so we need to decide how we want to use this technology, right? These powerful technologies like ChatGPT, um, you know, um, or communication like um, Twitter, X, what you call it now, and um, financial technology. All these things can be used in, more, in two ways. They can be used to liberate people or enslave them. And now we are going to see a few cases, right? So how, how this is going to be trickier and trickier in the future. So um, the threat to um, personal liberty. So we know that uh, technology is being embraced by governments, is being embraced by big corporations. Every time we use a search engine, every time we use a social network, we use technology. Every one of us cannot, almost any one of us cannot live with a phone in his pocket. So how we can, how we can make sure that the technology is not turning back on, on its creators, right? It's almost like, uh, you know, either Matrix or Terminator or whatever sci-fi movie you like most. Is uh, we have to think about it. So there is, um, I think, Schwab that says, we will own nothing and we will be happy. So think about it, right? So someone is telling us that, you know, everything that we built, everything that humanity participated to build will be taken from us because there are people that are that feel that can, they know better than us. They know better than anyone of us. They know better than what we need in our lives. They know, know better what 
uh, of what uh, our families need, our community needs. So they say, well, you know, we are going to remove piece by piece everything that you have in your lives. Trust us, we can't decide for you because we have a, we have a picture of how the world, world really is. So you don't know that, right? So you, you should just focus on, on your little house, your, your little environment, your friends, have some fun, right? You will be happy, but over time, you will have nothing. And they tell us, right? So they tell us, and the more they tell us, the more media will reinforce the message, it will feel normal. So now we are all upset for that sentence, but you know, in 10 years, we will think it's okay, yes, fine. You know, we, we don't have anything. We don't be, you know, there is, there is uh, someone that, uh, takes care of me, right? So the government takes care of me, or like a, a shadow organization takes care of me. Well, you know, um, I, I don't think we don't, I, I'm sure that many of you think, don't think is something that we should let happen. So taking control of uh, our future is something that uh, no one will do it if we are not doing it, right? So we cannot, we cannot think, well, someone else will think about it. Because the, someone else will think about it, will think the same, right? Will think, someone else will think about it. And so no one else will think about it, or if no one thinks about it, then, you know, we'll owe nothing in the future, and that will become more and more reality, right? So if we keep looking around for someone to do the first step, then it, we all, will all fail. So... Um, Today, I think, is, uh, you know, compared to um, the broader view of the, um, the global ecosystem, technology, um, social media, and the communication, uh, you know, whatever, we are going to talk about um, the, the specific aspect of finance and how Bitcoin is actually the solution to create a better financial world. It's obvious concepts to, to many of you, but nevertheless, I think they are really fitting to show how if we are not fighting back with the tools that we created for us, you know, someone else will embrace the same technologies that allow to these tools to be created in the first place and use them against us, right? So, um, the rise of financial surveillance. So, in the past, there was only cash, right? Throughout the, human the history of humanity, cash was, uh, um, was banknotes or, or coins that we have in our pockets. And we could decide to transact with, with whomever we wanted. So we want people could go to the fish market and buy some fish. And, uh, you know, the transaction was between the, the, the buyer and, uh, and the fishmonger. So today, we are already used to, are getting more and more used and hooked to digital money. And um, money, for most part, is already digital, right? Money is uh, sitting on, for, for the, especially for, for the uh, more de maybe developed worlds and countries, uh, money is, for most, for most part, digital. It means that every one of us, or many, people in the most developing country, developed countries have bank accounts. So in the bank accounts is just numbers in the database, right? Someone could make mistakes and money can be created and destroyed, and, uh, but it's just money in databases. And uh, when the Fed uh, prints money, it's not that they are um, issuing um, two trillions of uh, one dollar banknotes you know, in, uh, in the last, uh, as they did in the last six months. They are not physical banknotes. They issue debt that are numbers, that are digital numbers. So these numbers are getting more and more to control us. And in the past was not possible. So just in the last 30 years, this became possible. So it's something that humanity have never been used to. It's not that we have some, some um, previous history and we already fought this battle, so now we know how to defend ourselves. This is the first time, this is a, the, a really big challenge, and the, this is the first time in the human history that we are facing it. So, how we can defend ourselves, right? CBDCs are also raising, so um, 
CBTCs are the central bank digital currencies. They are uh, made and they are thought as an instrument to control people. So they started, uh, the first countries that started to issue these uh, CBDCs are the most uh, authoritarian countries. But think about it, right? So right now, even if you have a bank account, not everyone have a bank account, but if you have a bank account, you can choose your bank. You choose your bank. And so you, you have a credit card, you, you use that credit card, you swipe that credit card in a shop, you buy something. The government doesn't know what you are buying. So the, your transaction stays with you, between you, the, um, the, the shop owner, and the payment provider company. It can be a bank, it can be the credit card company. But with a CBDC, if whatever you are buying, that transaction will be seen by the government. So it will be the first time in history where the government could know where every one of us are at any point in time. When you're swiping your card, you are buying a coffee. Also, there is an information about the, the coffee shop. And so imagine if the government could start putting all this stuff together and understanding, OK, knowing exactly where each one of their citizens are at any point in time. That is an incredible dystopia that I don't think we should allow to happen. Bitcoin comes to the rescue. So Bitcoin, we don't know what it is, but it is the very, same, the very reason why Bitcoin is important and why Bitcoin is, is fought by, by media companies, by mainstream media companies, is that it completely changed the balance. It creates an opportunity, it creates an option for, for communities, for people, communities, countries to decide for an alternative future. Again, we are at a crossroads. So uh, Bitcoin is check and balance to power. So it means that the more the establishment will force people in a direction that is dystopian, there is always Bitcoin with its shield to, to create an opportunity, to give an option to, for, to people to choose the freedom alternative, the open alternative. It's like when you have, you know, closed source software and open source software. You know, first there was Microsoft with Windows, was everywhere. But now, from a small idea, from a guy is sitting in his own room in uh, 1991, was Linux Torvalds. Now Linux is the most used operating system in the world. Every single one of you, apart the iOS users, everyone of you guys have Linux in these pockets. Eventually, open source systems that, have, that, can, that can have uh, global contributors will win. Because if society puts all its minds together, they will win. So many of the critics about Bitcoin as well, but it cannot scale, it cannot fulfill uh, you know, other use cases about being, you know, uh, moving. Yes, you can move money on Bitcoin, but it's low, it takes 10 minutes, the Bitcoin block time is 10 minutes, and, and so on and so forth. So it uh, cannot be used for payments. That is another narrative that we, it, it has been fed uh, to us for so, such a long time. So, well, there is like network. I'm sure that every one of you know uh, about uh, what this is. But also there are tools that um, I'm really proud about the fact that Bitfinex is developing tools like RGB. That is a protocol that allows assets to be built on top of uh, Bitcoin, right? Right now, everyone is uh, to build uh, assets is using altcoins, like altchains like Ethereum. But we can bring back all that economy to Bitcoin without needing, needing changes to Bitcoin. We can use our protocols like like Network, as I said, or RGB to issue assets. Could be stable coins or could be gift cards, could be whatever we want. But technologies like this are more and more possible they, they, are, they took years of research, because if you don't want to do things properly, if you want to do things securely, if you want to do things that have an actual impact, you cannot have them rushed, right? You need the best minds in the world to put them and put them together to try to create something that is unbreakable. That's the beauty of Bitcoin, right? It is unbreakable. 
and so no one can ever take it from us. And so it's the perfect layer to build tools like RGB. So many developers, I'm sure here around, there is Giacomo Zucco, there is Peter Todd, there is Maxim. Many, many of these developers contributed to RGB as a way to take back control of the financial system back to Bitcoin and not spread it across multiple other chains that, have, that are weaker than Bitcoin. Right? So if we allow the proliferation, well, you know, everyone can do whatever they want, but if we keep believing that the world can have a proliferation of, uh, of altcoins and altchains, and they have the same properties of Bitcoin, well, we are completely wrong. We are giving more and more opportunities to, um, to someone that thinks that they know better than us to put more and more control on us. With the Lightning and uh, Bitcoin can be an RGB, Bitcoin can be super efficient, can, be, can fulfill the requirement of peer-to-peer -peer transactions. So we go back to the moment in time, back in time, when people were transacting among each other as with cash, right? It's peer-to-peer -peer transactions. So you don't need an intermediary, right? No one should be your intermediary. You don't need, you are not, you, we are not child anymore, right? We don't need someone hand-holding ourselves, and when we are doing a transaction, we are capable to manage our own money. And um, Bitcoin is also the tool that is bringing financial inclusion to people that have no bank accounts. There are 3 billion people in this world, not bad people, people like every one of us, peers, that's a beautiful word, that um, don't have the same opportunities in terms of being part of the financial system, having access to loans, credit, and so on. That's something that Bitcoin can change. It's changing already. You know, um, I was uh, um, I was was walked through the process of establishing Bitcoin Beach. That is a beautiful example. Everyone should follow that template. That template should be exported globally because it's something that something that clearly works. And um, the, I was thinking that the, the beauty of El Salvador is that the government decided to make Bitcoin legal tender. And of course, it's cool, right? I'm a Bitcoiner. Uh, I think it's, 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 um, it's, it's a great thing because it will empower Bitcoin more and more. We'll create a sort of a, so a template for other countries to get more adoption and so on and so forth. But the actual message, if you think about it, is that the government itself, usually governments, are trying to remove opportunities and options from people to let them, you know, and to, to, to push them towards a unique solution that they can control, so they can control the country. Because controlling money is a proxy to controlling the country. But no, El Salvador decided to make Bitcoin legal tender, almost saying, guys, you don't have to trust us. If we turn out evil, you have an alternative, and you have, I'm going to teach you how to use it. So that is, when I listen, when I read things about El Salvador, written by mainstream media, right? They don't have even the smallest clue about what freedom means, because if a government decides to almost create an opportunity for people to circumvent their authority, that means that that government, that country is truly free. And in fact, Bitcoin is becoming a light in the darkness um, of authoritarian countries. So not, not, not uh, all the countries are like El Salvador. Uh, unfortunately, we are seeing how in certain countries um, Money is a way to keep people in check. You have, you know, the imagine, I, I like to speak about the concept of individual sovereignty, right? So in order to be free, you need two things, financial freedom and freedom of speech. If you are, imagine that you can transact freely, but you cannot communicate with the person that you are transacting with, you are not really free, right? Because if you cannot communicate, it doesn't matter. But, and uh, vice versa, if you, Cannot, if you can communicate freely with whomever you want, you can say whatever you want, but you cannot move money, are you, you are not free either, right? So you need both the things together in order to be fully free. And that's exactly 
what Bitcoin has cr created as a movement. So Bitcoin is started movement of, of free thinkers, right, from the cyberpunk movement um, and, and onwards. People are thinking about these problems all day long, and they're thinking how they can keep building technologies that are similar to, to Bitcoin in the philosophy that can empower people in the same way, but maybe in other areas like communication. Tomorrow, if you, if you are interested, we are going to talk about Kit. It's a peer-to-peer -peer, um, chat app without you know, blockchains, just Bitcoin for communications. That goes, you know, follows the same examples that I'm, I'm trying to, to, um, you know, to discuss about today. And um, inclusion, right? So the, we always talk about Bitcoin in terms of financial inclusion. That's fine. Everyone now understands the concept uh, is the fact that uh, it allows people that don't have bank accounts, that don't have access to financial systems, to use Bitcoin as a form of currency. But also, I like to refer to financial inclusion from the technical point of view, right? You now have, uh, we know, all know that there are altcoins, as I said before. Some altcoins have the ability, they claim to be super fast. They can, Bitcoin can process one transaction, well, can process multiple transactions, sorry, but can process one block every 10 minutes. There are blockchains that thought it better. They thought, well, but you know, Bitcoin is old technology, right? It's, it's 15 years old, but it's old technology. I can do better. I will make a blockchain that um, we need a, the Bender meme here, but I can do blo a blockchain that has 400 milliseconds block time and can process gazillion transactions per second. Sure, how that blockchain could work if you are in one of the least served countries in Africa in terms of uh, internet and communication. How do you expect people to be able to use in countries that don't have a proper internet infrastructure, a blockchain that is extremely fast or have huge blocks? The beauty of Bitcoin is that it's around 1.3 megabytes each block and you have 10 minutes to download it. So even if you have one of the slowest internet lines, if you, even if you have just, um, even if you are in the middle of the desert, you can still have a satellite and, and participate to the Bitcoin blockchain because you can download blocks. That is only possible, you cannot do it with, uh, with Solana, for example, because the frequency, every 400 milliseconds, that is twice, more than twice per second, you have is 2.5 times per second you have a block, right? With Bitcoin, you can participate to the global financial system and if you can download one megabyte every 10 minutes. That is inclusion. When Satoshi created Bitcoin, he thought through all these things to make sure that everyone could use it. It's not like uh, if, you are, if you have a mainframe in a Google data center, then yes, you, 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 you can participate to financial inclusion. You have already financial inclusion if you can afford like $2,000 per month of a, of a mainframe in, in, in Google, right? So that's the beauty of Bitcoin. I, I like to speak it also, always in also from the technological point of view. And of course, we have been told that uh, Bitcoin is volatile, is, uh, is, uh, then is bad, but look at, look at Tesla, look at all the other um, stocks, famous stocks that in the last months also have been heavily affected by the, 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 the crazy geopolitical situation we are living in. Right, so it's all about the narrative that mainstream media is trying to push towards us. So, so at some point will become noise for, for many of us, I'm sure. Our mission as Bitfinex is, uh, is just to teach this stuff, right? To, to, to try to do it in our, the most humble, simple way, uh, trying to express our views, try to build things that uh, you know, can, can, can be used by many. Um, we are at a point where, uh, well, Bitfinex started as an exchange, but we are contributing to a ton of open source projects based on Bitcoin. And we believe that is the only way to, for us to give back, right? To be, give back, we, we got lucky. We got in, Bitfinex started in 2012. How we can, how we can give back to, to the Bitcoin community that, and, or to Bitcoin as a technology that made our success is keep reinvesting good portion of our profits into building Bitcoin technology and using opportunities like this to educate or to at least uh, share our feelings and share our views on how 
we could continue on the same path of that Bitcoin created for us. We are just creating a parallel um, financial system, and unfortunately, even the term we, we, we discuss about how chaos is, is, is being used in a negative connotation at the beginning, but also parallel. If you think about it, if you read on, on, on journals, right, they will tell you, like, yes, a parallel financial system, how they make it sound like dirty. It's just parallel, it's just an option. What do you have to be afraid of? If, you're, or if you think your option is better, why you are afraid of a parallel financial system? And uh, everything comes from education, right? Success is about education, right? So the more people know about this, the more, more people understand all the nuances, understand what is happening, why is happening, what are the end goals of um, centralized powers, then more chances that we can easily fight back. And um, Bitcoin is a global community, so as I was saying, like with a simple example of Linux as an operating system, global communities have a ton of power. It's our choice, so we are at crossroads. I know that uh, many of you are surely taking the path towards freedom, liberty, but uh, hopefully you can discuss about this stuff also with your family and friends um, over coffee and express them why everyone of us matters in taking the decision, taking the right path, the right direction at the crossroads. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.